keep it applicable. Um, if you've got a poor brand, um, again, this is a phenomenal way for you to improve your brand uh, through doing this. Um, this is a great opportunity to discuss and really kind of expose your, your employment brand on, on, you know, do people really want to work here? And it's a great way to get some feedback, but also to test some new things um, and design a new brand. So when we say design a new brand, I think what we really, you know, what we want to stress is um, a new brand for maybe different, different segments. So do you have a, a slogan for a specific department? Um, do you have a look and feel and language for a specific department? And I think then you need to have that high level core employment brand messaging, but it needs to be then segmented out to the specific groups that you're speaking with on interesting information. This is a sample network. So what you've got here basically, and this is a, a mock-up of, of one of ours, but you can see here I've got administrative talent, I've got executive management talent, human resource talent, um, and so forth. So basically what this does is this is again like a job board that we had open jobs for, but the link to this would say join our talent networks. And they can see here then if they were to click on one of the jobs, they would see a description on why would they want to join our human resource network, why would they want to join our product management network, and specific messaging around that. You can see I've also included some, some employment branding components around employment videos, right? What's it like to work here? Um, some of you may already have this, some of you have been talking about it. If you've got the resources to get a good video made, I say push this internally. Um, it's, it's, right now, it's great because it's not necessarily standard practice. Everyone's talking about it, but it's got huge weight right now if you've got this kind of collateral in your marketing stuff. So, again, a great opportunity. Um, just to go back there one slide, um, we've talked a lot with some of our clients and, and theoretically about doing almost the same way the communication plan would work over a 12 month period is creating a new video every two months. So what a great way to go send out through using the new world of the web and multimedia. You know, here's the latest video on why people on, on, on why people want to work here, ways to reinforce and the the, the watching of this video instead of a, a text e email will be huge for you as far as investment. So instead of going investing, you know, five thousand dollars a quarter into into print advertising, I'd look at kind of diverting some of that some of that re some of those resources into multimedia and specifically um, a career site that's based on talent networks and videos and that speak to the employment brand message. Quick pipeline, how this would look. So you've got your candidate marketing exercises. Um, you guys are going to know what works best for certain types of, uh, of, of candidates. Um, develop those those marketing exercises. Drive them into a specific network, and then once they're in that network, they've got to have a, a you've got to have a candidate relationship management program. So you can touch base with them through the CRM program consistently, and then when a new job opens that's specific to them you've got a, a ready-made pipeline that you can go message both for them to apply but also for them to send to their friends. Um, classification, so if you've got a marketing talent network or a customer service network, you're going to need to separate these individuals in a specific way. Um, basically sort them, so you know, if they're a .NET developer and they want to get into marketing, there's going to be people who will sign up for networks who won't, who won't be right for that network. So you need to be able to identify those quickly. So my suggestion is to maybe make it simple uh, at first to classify people in that talent network as either junior, intermediate, senior, or management level. Um, the other opportunity is look at your workflow of how you're going to manage these guys. What are the steps? So when they apply, what happens? Once they're in, what happens? And, and how are you categorizing them at what level? Because that's going to be critical for messaging and also job opportunities. Now the best practice that I've seen around this, um, and, and this is again uh, best practice from some of the Fortune 500s and, and, and a practice that we use, is to create custom pre-screen questionnaires. So if somebody signs up for a marketing talent network, essentially we've got a set of questions that will allow us to see are they are they a minimum minimal are they qualified? So are they in the region that we need to hire people for? Do they have experience, say, marketing in that industry? And then the questions will then depict at what level are they in that, that, that chain. So are they junior, intermediate, senior, management? Based on their score, we can very easily sort them. So this is a best practice that some of you may have, but certainly a great way to manage your pipelines. 
quick sample report. So how do you measure this stuff? Um, my recommendation at first, you may find more custom metrics that you want to look at over time. I'd make it really simple. I do a monthly report that more or less has uh, the name of the talent network, your total, your total network size, how many new came in last quarter, um, how many hires did you get from that network, because that's going to be interesting to see. I mean, that's going to really depict that this is working for you. And so how many hires did you make from that network last quarter? But then also, how many referrals did you get? If you've got an email campaign solution on top of this, you'll know you'll know where these candidates are coming from. So, you know, does this is the referral components working? Um, and then finally, kind of your quarter, your goal for next quarter is how many new people do you want to drive in? Um, and I'd use this as almost a if you've got to hire ten, let's say you got to hire ten customer service call center people a month. I would say you probably need to drive consistently four to five times the applicant flow for that role in on a monthly basis. So it's great to set those targets to start getting proactive around that. Um, so what we're seeing obviously is, is some of these processes, they weren't needed two, three years ago. We weren't talking about, maybe there were some companies doing this, but it's becoming more of, a, more of an issue with the candidate deficiency. So, this is absolutely a new approach that some of you may be using. Some of you are already somewhat doing it with your employee referral campaign. So thinking about your best practices there and applying it out, outwards to, to broader communities. Um, my view on it is, I mean, this is a strategy, but more important, this is mandatory. This, is, this type of an approach is best practice, in my opinion, for, for how you're building out your recruitment strategy for your firm. So quickly to, to get into this, I just want to, you know, basically that's kind of summarizes what, what, what I wanted to cover today. I'm, I'm, I'm expecting some good questions on this and some specific questions. But uh, with that being said, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Eric McKinnon here to kind of read out some of the questions and I'll do my best job to answer them here within the next uh, five to ten minutes. Great, Cam. Uh, first question we've got here is, would you advise job alerts to be specific to separate talent networks or to alert all candidates on all jobs so they can go ahead and refer them on to their, uh, their networks? Um, really great question. Um, and to be honest, we've been, we've been uh, testing both. Um, my belief on this and my assumption is if you've got 55 people in marketing, um, if you think about who may be around that talent network from a job alert is salespeople know marketing people really closely. So you may not want to hit everybody, but you may want to hit applicable groups. So um, if you've got a management level talent network, they have, they're also going to know marketing people, for example. So I would, I would say the more applicable networks you can hit, the better, but it's got to be applicable. So you probably don't want to send that job to a, a, a junior developer candidate because then that, that's going to be seen as spammy and unapplicable to them. But a salesperson, will seem that applicable. And that, that is absolutely a best practice that I've seen through a couple of major recruitment agencies. Great. Another question here. Do you need to refuse candidates permission to put them on a list to receive user information from you about potential opportunity roles? I would highly recommend for it, yeah. So you need to put, um, my recommendation on best practices around this is to create some kind of an approval or some kind of an opt-in. And there's specific ways to do this. It's either by many of you have a disclaimer um, that that you may have it may populate itself automatically through your current recruitment technology. But uh, that would be my recommendation: is having that disclaimer and getting that opt-in is going to be a huge, huge impact. Now, if someone's applying directly to you to a talent network, then essentially they are opting in, and that language should be up front that we're going to communicate out to you around job opportunities and around your specialty. Um, for past applicants, you need to create a system. If they're applying for a specific job, um, you know you need to put, ideally, it's best practice, put some kind of disclaimer in there, having them opt in to hearing about future opportunities. Great. Uh, can you provide the insight into managing candidate expectations when you're building pipelines? So, for example, you know, you are a company, you may not want them ready to go, uh, which involves the formal interview process. How can we not have headcount for that person until a month or three months from now? Yeah, um, phenomenal question. I think um, that the messaging around this needs to be really specific. If, if people think they're applying for a job by joining a talent network, then the expectations are going to be off. So the messaging around 
there needs to be some value then, right? So I would be very upfront. When you go drive people to these talent networks, these specific jobs essentially that aren't specific jobs but more bullpens or talent pipelines essentially with some kind of um, consistency on background, um, you need to let them know that we're building this out, we've got consistent, we're growing, we're always got new opportunities. Be really clear in your messaging up front that we want to stay in touch with you and if you're good, you know, whether there's an opportunity in a week from now, an opportunity in two years, we, we want to stay in touch with you for, for future opportunities. So you've got to be dead clear on this because if people expect they're applying to a job, um, their expectations are going to be heavily misled. Great. Well, uh, question here. What's the most efficient way to manage candidates in your pipeline? Can you recommend some software that caters to this? Um, the software that we use is the Hiredesk applicant tracking system. Um, the website's talenttech.com. Um, so that's the software that we use. They've got some email functionality within it. Um, that would be my recommendation. What if, if you're looking at a new solution, um, or if you if you don't have this functionality, what what you want to what you don't want to do is have numerous different applications. You don't have to be exporting lists and then sending emails through a different application. My recommendation is to get a system that can do all of that at once for you. So uh, again, we use the hired desk system. Uh, it works well for us. You can mass message, merge fields, and so forth. It works well, but also embed hyperlinks. Um, there is some great email marketing uh, tools on the market, um, one of which that's that's really, really cost effective for this that you can get some great metrics out of is, uh, is um, sorry, it's, it's one's exact target. That's a little more expensive, but uh, clearly um, constantcontact.com is an email marketing solution that you could have a look at that's fairly affordable. That could be really great for these campaigns, both for employees and also for your internal networks. Actually, if I could just touch on this, and I'll throw this out to you. If some of you are, are the more creative out of the group here, there's a phenomenal text messaging tool that you can get that's very affordable called Stun1, S-T-U-N-1. Um, and you can actually do text messaging alerts to these people too. So um, it certainly raises your cool factor um, with these people as far as communication methods. So um, I encourage you, that's the one that we've um, tested and looked at and, and used on, a, on occasion. But uh, maybe something you want to look at as well if you want to kind of um, bend the rules here a little bit and, and do something a little more out of the box. Cool. Just a uh, last quick question. Would you recommend emailing past candidates uh, prior to, or do you, I guess, just to ask them if they want to join our new talent network? Um, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, what, what I think the best practice around that, what you would do is you'd send out uh, a, uh, an email campaign to all these individuals um, with direct hyperlinks to reapply to these networks. So that's probably the best and simplest way to do it um, by sending them to that portal again or to, the, to those listing of, net, of, the, of your job network or your talent networks. That's the best way to do it. Um, now, again, I think that you know, it's best practice to make sure that, hey, are these all emails? Are they scrubbed? Are they coming back? Are they clean? Um, but again, I mean, that's step one to me. That's just a piece of communication back out to Regestic Candidate saying, hey, we want to stay in touch with you. We've got a method to do this now is kind of, to me, step one in, in managing your talent community. So um, absolutely, that's a great place to start. So I wanted to thank Pam for walking us through this very informative webinar. So we'll probably end for a minute. I just wanted to quickly go through the five things you and all of us start to help this the talent communities and kind of pipelines into your process. So one of the first things you can do today is start to get some thought about what are those roles that you are always hiring for. So you're always hiring all center agents, sales representatives and so on. What are those roles? Because those would be good opportunities to use this kind of pipelines. Think about the marketing communication team and send these people. So what are the various emails you get in even right now every day and you're on the box and there's a of marketing. What are that information that we sent out to candidates that are a group of potential candidates? Look right now, even how do you keep in touch with the current candidates that are in your process? Is there an opportunity right now where you can be sending out a press release to current candidates and going through your two-week interview process? Ask yourself where most of your candidates come from. Do you, have, do you get a lot of candidates that come in from Monster or Office, for example? If so, that would be a prime place to be advertised for your town community and your candidate pipeline. Is that where you're already seeing a lot of success and a lot of different past hires from? So of course, you also want to improve communication with candidates already in the process. So send them that 
press release that just came out yesterday. Make sure that they're well informed. Some things you can do to start going for going forward. Start to create that account community portal on your website. So you could either add it simply as a link with on your website or get purchase a new website address with URL for it. So you can have my company talentcommunity.com or whatever you think might make sense. Start creating those standardized end of pipelines with the defined screen questions. That way when as you need to start using these kind of pipelines, you already know which of the candidates are going to be most interested and also ask some of that additional qualification you need. Make sure that you notify all of these potential candidates for your next job opening. Make sure, given that they've already opted into the process, you can let them know about the new job opening with your company two days before you post it on the job board. Makes these candidates feel privileged, makes it seem like it's a real benefit to have to join in that town community or candidate pipeline. Obviously, you're going to need to find the technology to help make this all work. So, again, as you saw earlier on in this slide, you can reach out to us at mindfootgroup.com here, and, or also email info at mindfootgroup.com if you have questions about both the best technology and so forth. Also, we'd encourage you to find the candidates, encourage candidates to join your account because you're playing with both of So, often various gifts and so forth. So we want to thank you for attending this webinar, but we also want to encourage you if you've got any feedback about this webinar or topics that you'd like to have us to discuss more in depth, please email us at info at mindgroupgroup.com so that we can really get a feel for what is it that you'd like to learn next and what would be most useful for us to help share some of our collective knowledge and brains on with you so that you can help further improve your recruiting processes and your organization or town. If there's areas from today that you, you, you wish we would have covered or talked about, or there's a, a, a further questions, please uh, send those to us. Um, we're, we're obviously trying to consistently improve the overall value that we're delivering through these webinars. So if you've got feedback, constructive feedback, that would be um, fantastic. Um, and again, uh, just to touch on, uh, Jeff, I want to thank you again all for, for taking part today. Um, really hope that you got some value out of this. Um, I know there was a lot of major big projects and some pretty strategic things to get done here over the long term. But um, you know, I hope you got some value and, and sparked some ideas here with you internally with your with your companies. So thanks very much for attending and that's all for today. Thanks.